playing the best basketball defense in any weather condition. I'm Tony. Welcome back to Streetball Strategy. In a video I released a couple of videos back, I talked about how to play the best basketball you could in any outdoor weather conditions. But I left a very important part of that video out, mainly because the video was running long and I didn't want it to be a 20 plus minute video. That part is something that most basketball videos on YouTube don't talk about. Probably at least 95% of the basketball videos on YouTube are all about offense, how to score. Barely any videos in comparison about how to play defense. So this video is about the best defensive strategies you can use in any outdoor weather conditions. Again, let's start with rain and how to defend the ball in the rain. So as I've talked about, the ball handler in the rain wants to move as little as possible and dribble as little as possible. So as you defending the ball, you should make him do the stuff he doesn't want to do. Now there is a variable here, which is, is he trying to get to the basket or not? If he's handling the ball and he's dribbling as if he's trying to penetrate the lane, my advice then is to do everything you can defensively to keep him away from the basket. Because remember, with that lack of surface tension that's making everything slippery out here in the rain, he's gonna wanna have the closest shot to the basket as possible. It's gonna give him the highest percentage chance of making a basket. So we wanna keep him away from the basket by pressuring him. So if his intention is to get to the rim and that's apparent to you, you should do everything you can to make sure he doesn't get closer to the rim. You're gonna do this by getting up close to him, really pressuring him, making him dribble, making him move, making him move faster than he wants to. My first go-to strategy on defense when defending the ball on a slippery court would be to let that ball handler have an open shot around the perimeter. I would rather have him shoot a jumper with a wet basketball on a wet court from deep than to let him get to the basket. The caveat here is that some players are better at adjusting and compensating to having a wet basketball than others are. As that happens, I would then compensate for how they are adjusting their game. But foremost, I would assume that with a wet ball, they're not gonna be a very good jump shooter, so I would play off of them, right? I would rather have them take a long distance jumper with a wet ball than get to the basket. In terms of defending off the ball on a slippery court, what you want to have is distance. You want to create as much distance as possible. What I'm talking about is you want to keep that teammate as far away from the ball as possible. And you want to keep that teammate as far away from the basket as possible. Because you want to make it that if the ball is passed to that player that you're defending, that is the longest possible pass there could be. And when they catch the ball on a pass, you want that pass to be caught as far away from the rim as can possibly be. Defending off the ball on a slippery court is a great time, a great opportunity for you to get steals because players are going to be more careful about the passes they throw because they have to be because the ball is slippery. In those situations, players are often going to telegraph when they're about to pass the ball, giving you the opportunity to get a better, more effective steals than you normally would. The further away you make the person you're defending, the farther you take them away from the ball, that means the farther the pass is gonna be, have to be, which is gonna make that pass even more dangerous, which is gonna give you even a better chance to steal the ball. In order to do that, you're gonna to have to have great, very solid footwork on defense in order to do all of this. Number one, to stay in front of whoever you're defending, but probably more so, importantly, so that you're not being uh, in danger of slipping. You know, you don't want to injure yourself. You don't want to put yourself into a position where even though you're up on the ball handler, you know, really pressuring him, trying to make him run and move, you're not doing it in a way where you're going to slip and you're going to hurt yourself in doing so. So having really good, fundamentally solid uh, footwork on defense on a slippery court is very vital to you making the most out of your defensive opportunities out here. Now let's talk about how to defend people when it's windy. 
defending on windy courts on the ball, you have the same kind of principles working here as you do in the rain. Again, you want to have as much distance between teammates and the basket. You want the longest possible passes between teammates and you want the longest possible jump shots from shooters on the other team. In this situation, I would encourage you to, when you're defending on the ball, do not be afraid to play off of that ball handler. Welcome him to shoot an open three-point jump shot. In stronger, windier conditions, it is much less likely that a good three-point shooter is going to be able to continue to be a good three-point shooter in windy conditions. You do not want them to get to the basket. You don't want them to drive to the basket. You don't want them posting up down there. So when they're around the perimeter, play off of them. Let them feel open, let them feel comfortable so that they are encouraged to take those long jump shots. Use that to your advantage. And then when they do try to penetrate the lane, when they do try to get close to the basket, now it's on you to punish them for doing that. If they're around the perimeter, right, now I kind of get a break because I don't have to do anything defensively if I'm defending on the ball because I would want him to shoot that jumper. But as soon as he starts to take a couple steps towards the basket, now we have to fight. Now you have to get up on him. Now you have to be a wall. You have to defend like the basket from 15 feet in closer because you don't want them to get to the basket any closer than you can possibly allow. In this case, you're probably gonna have to work absolutely as hard as you can on defense because you're gonna have to stay in front of the ball handler. You do not want them to get around you because the closer they get to the basket, the easier it is going to be for them to score, especially in windy conditions. So on defense, make sure you're playing in a way that sends the message to the ball handler that, okay, you wanna take that long jumper? Go right ahead and do that. It'll make them feel as comfortable as possible. But as soon as they take like two steps past, that three-point line, now you're up on them. You're in their chest. They can't move. You know, they're gonna get completely frustrated if they try to make their way towards the basket. Off the ball, the same kind of principles are pretty much similar, which is like, you want longer passes, right? You're hoping for, when passes happen, that they take as much distance as possible between players. Passes aren't going to be as affected by wind as they would be in rainy, wet, slippery conditions, but yet, and still, try to use that to your advantage that if the ball is gonna be passed, you want the longest passes possible. Force them, bait them into becoming a three-point shooting team in the wind because it's gonna drastically decrease the likelihood of them making those three-pointers. So on defense in the wind, whether you're on the ball or not, you're really gonna have to fight, you're really gonna have to bring a lot of energy because you're gonna have to try to keep uh, the players not not only away from the basket but away from each other and doing that's going to take a whole lot of energy it's going to take a whole lot of staying in front of them it's going to take a whole lot of wrestling if they get down towards the basket to try to deny them as much you know short distances as possible when it comes to sunny conditions where the sun is behind the backboard and every time you look at the backboard you get blinded by it defense in that situation comes down to manipulating the offensive players so that they're standing in a position where they're looking at the sun more specifically the ball handler you want the ball handler looking at the sun as much as possible so if you're depending on the ball try to maneuver him into positions where he's facing the sun and the sun is at your back. Now this is gonna be a balance here between making sure the sun is in his eyes while at the same time still defending the basket. And even if at first he's getting decent looks at the basket, you know, he's, he's still gonna have the sun in his eyes. It's still going to be affecting him. It's still, go it's still going to be a nuisance, one that you know, you want to have in his face as much as possible. So do whatever you can to make sure you're defending the basket. You know, the basket is number one priority always, but in doing so, try to also make sure he's facing the sun. When defending off the ball with the sun behind the backboard, in that situation, you're gonna wanna make sure that the person you're defending is in direct path of the sun so that when the ball handler is looking at them, looking for them, looking to pass to them, they have to look in the sun's direction to do so. Whatever you can do to keep the sun in the ball handler's face 
That's whatever you have to do on defense, whether you're defending the ball or defending off of the ball. In sunny conditions like that, you're really going to want to fight against the post. You're going to want to make being in the post a nightmare for whoever is going to be down there trying to get post position on you. Because when they're down there, they have their back to the sun, the sun is no longer affecting them, and they also have a closer shot at the basket. So you're really going to have to expend a lot of energy, you're going to have to really fight, really wrestle down in the post to let anybody know who, if they try to go down in the post and post up against you, it's going to be a nightmare. You want to discourage that as much as possible so that they get away from the basket, turn their body towards the sun and have the sun in their eyes. Really defending in the snow is not a whole lot different than defending out here in perfect weather conditions. You're still going to want to employ the same kind of game plan and strategy that you would in normal weather conditions because there's nothing really affecting the offensive side of the court. In my opinion, the best strategy for playing basketball when it's super cold outside is to defend the basket as much as possible. You want longer shots as much as possible. That's a theme in bad weather because in bad weather you have less control of the basketball. When it's cold outside, uh, the basketball is going to be very stiff. It's going to be very solid feeling. Shooting the ball is going to be more difficult because everything's going to be stiffer, right? The ball is going to feel more stiff. The backboard, the rim, everything's going to be a whole lot stiffer than normal in normal weather conditions. The ball itself could very well feel heavier because of it than you would feel in, you know, summer, spring, autumn, whatever it may be. In winter, in super cold conditions, the ball is going to feel solid. It's probably going to feel a little bit heavier, which means shooting it is going to be a little bit more difficult than in normal weather conditions. So long distance shooting is going to be more difficult in cold weather conditions and getting to the basket, shooting at, around, near the basket, like always, is going to give you a higher percentage shot. So as a defender, you're going to want to have a little bit more subtlety here than you normally would in, say, wind or rain, because what you want to do is you want to encourage long distance shooting without completely playing off of the ball handler. Because if the ball handler is a fairly good shooter in normal weather conditions, they're probably going to shoot the ball pretty well still in cold weather conditions. They should be able to adjust and compensate for that cold weather if they actually are a decently good shooter. Yet and still, no matter how good they compensate, no matter how well they try to adjust, the ball's still going to be stiffer than normal. So they're not going to get easy bounces, you know, lucky bounces like they may normally get in good weather conditions. So while you don't want to completely play off of them on the perimeter, you want to subtly kind of encourage them like, okay, if you want to take that long three, you're going to get a little bit of resistance from me, but not as much as usual because, you, you know, you kind of want them to shoot that three. It's much better for them to take that long distance shot than to try to get to the basket or work in the post. Same kind of principle applies to playing off the ball, which is you want to keep uh, you know, teammates who are not handling the ball away from the basket as far as possible because you don't want them posting up, you don't want them cutting and getting good looks at the basket. You want them to catch the ball as far away from the basket as possible. A good way to do this is to kind of play off of them, right? Not only are they going to, you know, hang around the three-point line more so if they feel like they're open when you're playing off of them, but also if you're not that close to them, they're not going to feel the need to move, to run, right? So the less they move, the less they run, the colder their body is going to feel, the colder it's going to get. That's good for you because the colder they are, the stiffer they are, the less mobile they're going to be able to be. The less mobile they are, the less of a threat they are to you to be able to score because they're not going to be able to run as fast or as effectively if their body is colder. So recognize how the element of cold is affecting not only the court, the ball, but also how it's affecting your opponents. And then do whatever you can to exacerbate that and use it against them. That's how to play the best basketball defense in any weather condition. Again, most people only focus on the offensive side of the game, but in 
certain conditions, you know, uh, weather conditions that most players are not used to playing in, you can really use those conditions against those inexperienced players if you know what you're doing. And even players that do have a little bit of experience playing in different weather conditions, most of those players only consider how to play well on the offensive end. Most of them don't consider how they can use defense in whatever weather conditions to make the game that much more difficult on their opponents. It's stuff like that, little stuff like that, that's gonna separate you, elevate you from your contemporaries out here. Stuff like that, that's like reputation building stuff out here. It's not, it's not a huge step. It's not anything that's going to, you know, take you from zero to a hundred, but it's something that you're gonna be able to put on your resume as when the weather is bad, when it's unusual, I play at least just as well in those conditions. I'm just as successful in weird weather conditions as I am in normal ones. But you can truthfully say that it doesn't matter the weather conditions. I play in everything and I play well and I play smart and I play more effective than you because I know what I'm doing. Most players can't say that. Most players don't care. Most of the time, stuff like that doesn't even come up, but when it does, you're gonna be able to say that when nobody else can. So don't look at bad weather as a inconvenience out here on the court. Look at it as another weapon that you can use. How can you use that weather against your opponents? Most players don't think about that. Most players don't take it that far. Most players don't take it that seriously, but we on this channel, that's what we do. We take the small stuff, the details, we bring it all together and then we use it to destroy anyone who tests us. So I want to thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, if you found it helpful, if you think it's going to help you play better in any weather conditions, better than anyone else out here, please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure to hit that thanks button. When you hit that thanks button, it directly supports the channel and it highlights your comments down in the comment section. Any comment that you leave is going to be highlighted in a way that sticks out and stands out from everybody else down there. So when you hit that thanks button, no, I definitely appreciate it. As always, like, share, comment, hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever any of my videos go live. And until then, I'll see you guys next week. This is history in the making. Can't you tell what I'm saying? You don't see, I don't fake it. To the top and I stayed. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs>